Over the last 70 years, Europe has transformed itself from a continent of war to a continent of peace. This series of videos will examine how they did that. Better forgiveness and peace than revenge and war. That is the European calculation, and forgiveness is always a calculation. On July 4th, 1879, British forces burned the royal kraal of King Tetsueo and the great Zulu as an independent nation ceased to exist. The king, in his leopard crown, was chased into the bush by white men. Tetsueo's generals might have joined him in the bush they knew so well and fought the British for years as had so many others but they were only part-time fighters and most of the time farmers and fathers. The proud Zulu leaders and people made a calculation and forgave because they were conquered. South Africa's white tribe, the Boers, were another matter altogether. Unlike the Zulus, the Boers were extremely good with rifles even while riding horseback. In their red coats and white suspenders, the Brits might as well have been wearing bullseyes. However, with time and cash, the British might have prevailed. Eventually, Her Majesty made a calculation. She forgave for cash. The British and Boers fought a second war in 1899. As they had with the Zulus years earlier, the British came back and took the Boer capital. But unlike the Zulus, the Boers took to the bush and fought as commandos. Unable to stop the commandos' guerrilla tactics, the British built concentration camps. They rounded up the wives, sons, and daughters of the Afrikaner fighters and put them in filthy camps with unspeakable conditions. The goal was to demoralize the commandos. It worked. The Afrikaners ultimately made the same calculation as the Zulus. It just took more misery. They forgave to spare the ones they loved. The Afrikaners of Orange Free State forgave the British for the horrors of the camps, at least enough to join in a political alliance with them. For Free State Afrikaners, forgiving the British was necessary to win a political fight against the Afrikaners of the Transvaal. In 1992, Nelson Mandela was released. The African National Congress was poised to take over the government and South African culture had huge choices to make. Maybe they had done so much fighting and forgiving, their cultural magnanimity muscles had bulked huge. Maybe they were really tired of fighting. Maybe they calculated that everybody forgiving everybody would benefit everybody. Under the leadership of P.W. Bota, Nelson Mandela, F.W. de Klerk, Desmond Tutu, and others, South Africans of all colors copped some of the finest attitudes ever seen. Their Truth and Reconciliation Commission is to this day a model of national forgiveness around the world. The Zulu's 1879 calculation to forgive was not in vain. 143 years after the burning of the royal kraal in Ulundi, the chief executive of South Africa is a traditional dance doing, six wives having, leopard crown wearing, full-blooded Zulu man, President Jacob Zuma. I'm Aaron Freeman.